She has a lump on her neck here on your side. German short haired pointers are known to suffer with certain types of soft tissue cancers. And in my nearly 20 year experience, I've seen quite a number. The thought of losing her on top of everything else. There's really not enough room in here for this. <laughs> all right, all right. Nearby, Claire's getting ready to bring in her German short haired pointer after a lump was discovered on Lola's neck. I didn't find it myself. It wasn't visible to look at. A friend of mine was petting the dogs when she was looking after them. And the next time I saw her, she said, oh, you know, Lola's got a lump on her neck. I was like, what? No, I did not know that Lola had a lump on her neck. Um, of course, whenever anybody says it's a lump, the first thing you think of is, oh my God, it could be cancer, it could be serious. Oh! Right now, Lola's showing no symptoms, and her little mate Betty is showing no sympathy. I know, I know. But Claire is not coping nearly as well. A year ago, her Crazy. life changed forever when she made a sea change to Cornwall <laughs> with her three dogs. It was me, Lola, a miniature schnauzer called Scruffy, and a miniature Dachshund called Sprout. The little family loved their walks on the beach until one day a freak wave crashed in and dragged them all out to sea. The undertow was just unbelievable and the beach was, was shingle. It was like being on ball bearings and I was just sucked out. I thought, this is it. This is where I die. I don't get to say goodbye to anybody. The next wave, I hit the beach and I jammed my arms and my feet into the shingle as hard as I could. And I like scrambled up onto the bottom of the seawall. And I looked around and Lola was there. So she either not got sucked in or got herself out. She's muscly and she's strong. So she had the strength. And I, I turned around and I could see Sprout's body floating upside down. And I saw the end of Scruffy's tail. And then the wave came in, and I just started screaming. And that was just so fast. And one minute we're sitting on the beach, enjoying the sunshine, the next minute they're just gone. She wasn't this grey before the accident. She got all grey. Claire couldn't face living near the beach anymore and finally sold up and moved back to Richmond. Both she and Lola were scarred. Lola was terrified of life. She was just completely frozen. Getting her to eat after the accident was an absolute nightmare. She was just, no, not interested. <laughs> She's so stubborn. Finally, Claire decided there was only one answer. This little terrier puppy turned out to be the therapy they both needed. When I was watching them this morning, climbing all over each other, I was thinking, oh, we've come such a long way. And she's so much happier. <laughs> she's kind of almost regained some of her puppyhood. So yeah, it's a completely different world. Better go and get it checked out, love. But now it's time for Lola's appointment with Scott. You try and think, oh, you know, it'll be fine. Surely I won't be so unlucky. But oh God, it would be heartbreaking. The thought of losing her on top of everything else. Scott. Hello, Hi. lovely ladies. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. And you. Hello, Lola. Hello, beautiful. Scott's Come now on. ready for his consult Come with on, Claire Lola. and Lola. Come on in. So, what is our beautiful girl in for today? She has a lump on her neck here on your side. Okay. When am I noticed it? Right. Oh, yeah. That is a little bit of a concern. The worst case scenario for this is the big C, it's cancer. That would be an absolute nightmare. If I felt it in my dog, yes, we can take samples and we can do all sorts of things. But I think after everything that you guys have been through, I don't really want to risk it. No, no. And I actually kind of feel that if it was my dog, I would just want it out and dealt with. Whatever she needs, then that's what we'll do. Hey, baby. We can't have you sick. No. We can't have you sick. 
it's just such a tragedy that just as you see them getting to the top of the mountain, Lola and Claire seeming happier and settled back here in Richmond, that they're hit with this. And I don't want to be the one bringing them any more heartache. They simply don't deserve it. So Claire, I always think in these instances that uh, take the bandaid off quickly. All right, so I think if you head off, okay. I will look after your girl, we'll get it done as soon as possible. Yes. And then we'll move forward together. Okay. Okay, all Thank right. Thank you. And you know I'm gonna take going. care of her. Yes, I know you will. Go on, Scott's almost as good as me. <laughs> almost. Bye-bye. See you later. Say bye, mummy. It's hard saying goodbye to her because I know she's gonna get upset. She's likely gonna be anxious and confused and scared. It's a bit that really upsets me. And let's give you some nice happy drugs. Get you chilled out and get that horrible lump taken out. Yeah. Good girl. Time for sleeps. Good girl. At the Richmond practice, Scott and head vet nurse Emma are about to start the surgery to remove Lola's suspicious looking lump. Mummy would be proud of you, wouldn't she? Yeah. German short-haired pointers are known to suffer with certain types of soft tissue cancers. And in my nearly 20 year experience, I've seen quite a number. Uh, em, yeah, look at this. Mm. This is the Ooh. lump I don't like the look or feel of. Has it been growing for quite a while? She's only just picked it up. And the problem is, is if she's only just picked it up, that means it's growing quickly. Yeah. And growing quickly, we know, is a good indication of malignancy of cancer. That's why I feel so strongly that we need to get in, get rid of whatever this is, and hopefully give Claire the result she's looking for, which is a clear one. So I'm just gonna cut through the skin and have a good look at it and see if I can remove the whole thing. I'm liking the look of this more and more. Oh, there it is. Thank God this looks like it might be something benign. So the minute that Scott made the first incision, I think both of our eyes lit up when we saw this big lump of fat. When a mass looks fatty, it could be something called a lipoma, which is a benign lump, uh, not cancerous, which would be totally awesome. And that's a veterinary technical term. Totally awesome, <laughs> yes. For, for a relieved vet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But Scott's relief is short-lived. So right next to the jugular. Nice and easy with the scissors, Doc. While the mass does appear to be benign, it's dangerously wrapped around the jugular vein, which is the very large blood vessel carrying blood from the head back to the heart. There's the jugular vein right there. If this vein is cut, the patient can die within minutes. I was pushed to the limit because we're literally millimetres away from cutting a major blood vessel and causing a huge amount of blood loss. It's holding on for dear life, this thing. <laughs> get out. Like all fat, it just doesn't want to go anywhere. It's the hardest thing to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Very close to the jugular. The whole lump. Here we go. At last, Scott is satisfied he's removed the entire mass and the jugular vein is still intact. If I'd cut that bad boy, I would have definitely made a mess of your surgery room. Blood splatter's not so easy to get off some white walls. Mm, Very no. cranky nurse on yeah, your hands. I'd, you'd be mad, Claire would be mad. Yeah, I'm really glad <laughs> that I didn't. The relief that I felt when uh, I could see that this wasn't a mass that was gonna be life-threatening was just overwhelming. Ah, fantastic. Never have I thought looking at fat would be... So satisfying. So satisfying. This is definitely a day where fat is good. There was an absolute wave of positivity. Uh, I couldn't get the smile off my face. I was absolutely elated. Oh, you're good, aren't you? What a break. Girl. Yeah, what a brave guy. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Kisses for Dr. Scott. Oh, I think Lola was definitely oh, saying God. thank you. She looked into his eyes and gave him a little kiss on the nose. I actually had a tear in my eye. It was beautiful. That's nice. Yeah. 
I cannot wait for Lola to wake up and just to send her home with mum, get a kiss and a chew probably from Betty and to give Claire the good news. I'm sure she's going to be ecstatic. Let's let you have a snooze and we'll call mummy. Yeah. Later that month, the famous St Margaret's Fair is in full swing and Scott and Claire meet up again. Hello. Hi. Mwah. Oh, I'm glad to see you. I know. Scott's been invited to judge the dog competitions. <laughs> With Lola having survived a recent cancer scare, Claire is feeling lucky. Do I expect to see an entrance? Uh, yes, so we're going for cutest puppy. Cutest puppy. I think she course. might be the cutest puppy. Of course you are. Uh, I think we might be in with a fairly good chance. I know one of the judges uh, oh, very yes. well. Oh, yes. OK. Very well. All so, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think you might go quite well. OK. <laughs> I think I might be a little biased. I have a feeling that I might have met a dog that I think's going to win. And maybe I'm a clairvoyant, but Mm, Betty, she's got a good chance, I think. Mm. And Lola can be prettiest bitch. Best veteran? <laughs> Surely we can find a better name than prettiest bitch. <laughs> Let's go for prettiest old lady, shall we? Yeah, yeah, it sounds a bit harsh otherwise. So good to see you. And you. Good luck at the puppy show. Good luck. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.